welcome to It's Elementary with Calvert Library. Today I'd like to share a book with you called Manfish, a story of Jacques Cousteau. This book was written by Jennifer Byrne and illustrated by Eric Priboy. I'd like to give a big thank you to the book's publisher, Chronicle Books, for allowing us to share it with you today. Let's take a closer look. Bubbles rising through the silence of the sea, silvery beads of breath from a man deep, deep down in a strange and shimmering ocean land of swaying plants and fantastic creatures. A manfish swimming, diving into the unknown, exploring underwater worlds no one had ever seen and no one could have imagined. Our story starts many years before, in France, with a little baby boy born under the summer sun. His parents named him Jacques. From the very beginning, little Jacques loved water, the way it felt on his hands, his face, his body, and water made him wonder. He wondered why ships floated, why he floated, and why rocks sank. One day, Jacques read a story about a man who hid underwater by breathing through a long tube. Jacques tried it and discovered it was impossible. He dreamed that someday he would be able to breathe underwater for real. At night, Jacques dreamed he could fly with the birds among the clouds, with his arms stretched out like wings. Jacques spent his days playing, experimenting, and creating. He wrote little books that he illustrated with his own drawings, and he was fascinated by machines. He studied blueprints and built a model of a crane that was as tall as he was and actually worked. Movies fascinated Jacques, too. He wanted to know how they were made, how the cameras worked, and how chemicals made pictures appear on the film. Jacques saved his allowance, penny by penny, until he had enough to buy a small home movie camera. The first thing he did was take it apart and put it back together. Then he began to film everything around him. He put his brother, cousins, parents, and friends in his movies. He dressed up as a villain with a painted-on mustache and made some very villainous films. Jacques was always the star, the director, the writer, and usually the cameraman. When Jacques finished school, he joined the French Navy. His ship sailed around the world, and everywhere he went, he filmed what he saw. In China, he filmed men catching fish with their bare hands. They held their breath underwater for many minutes. Jacques wondered what that would be like. One day at the beach, a friend gave Jacques a pair of goggles with rubber frames and glass to look through. Jacques wore them into the ocean. Beneath the water, he was surrounded by silvery green forests of sea plants and fish he had never seen before. Everything was silent and shimmering. It was a whole new world. When he came up, he saw cars, people, buildings, and telephone poles. Once again, he went below into the magical underwater world. At that moment, Jacques knew his life was changed forever. His eyes had been opened to the wonders of the sea. Jacques and his friends, Philippe and Didi, began to dive together. They experimented to see how long they could stay underwater and how deep they could go. Jacques created a waterproof case for his camera to film the amazing kingdom he and his friends were exploring beneath the surface. They made rubber suits to keep themselves warm and flippers to help them cook better. But Jacques wanted to stay down longer than just one breath at a time. He realized he needed to take more air with him, enough air to explore the mysterious depths and vast expanses of the ocean, to swim through the sea as free as a fish. He wanted to become a man fish, and he began to work on just 
how to do it. On a warm summer day, Jacques stepped into the blue Mediterranean Sea with his new invention. He called it the aqua lung because aqua means water and our lungs are the part of our body that holds the air we breathe. Below the surface, Jacques swam and glided and dove. He did flips and somersaults. He stood upside down on one finger and laughed bubbles into the sea. Jacques could breathe beneath the water. Now he could swim across miles of ocean, his body feeling what only scales had felt, his eyes seeing what only fish had seen. The water made him feel like he was flying, just like in his dreams. Jacques had done it. He had become a manfish. Jacques was ready to explore the oceans of the world. He needed a boat and found a big old wooden navy ship called Calypso. In a year, he turned it from a warship into an explorer ship. Jacques, Philippe, and Didi gathered a crew, their aqualungs, their hopes, and their dreams, and set off to explore the inside of the sea to film a world that no one had ever seen before. On their journeys, they dove deep into a seascape of plants, green and purple prickly plants, red branchy plants, spongy plants, wispy feathery swaying plants, slow dancing to the rhythms of the sea. They discovered plants that could feed you, plants that could poison you, plants that looked like fish, and fish that looked like plants. They swam with giant whales hitched rides on sea turtles and made friends with porpoises with shining eyes and smiling faces. They filmed fierce and frightening sharks. So strange and dangerous, Jacques and his crew had to build cages, not for the sharks, but for themselves, so they could make their movies without being eaten. Their cameras captured camouflaged scorpionfish. Ugly as toads with poisonous spines, dorados, brilliant fish that glowed the colors of emeralds, sapphires, and rubies, checkerboard fish with red and white checks from head to tail. Deep down, they discovered a kingdom of giant rays, fish that fly through the water with wings that swim. They came face to face with a fish big as a truck with long fangs, lips like giant tires, and huge saucer eyes. They called it the truck fish. On the bottom, they found pink ghost crabs with eyes on long stalks, buried so deep in the sand, they looked like a garden of eyes. And flute fish with heads like horses and bodies the shape of tubes sticking out of rocky openings like pencils in a cup. Everywhere the Calypso went, Jacques and his crew made films of what they saw. Films that played in movie theaters, films that played on TV. Millions of people all over the world discovered the wonders of the sea for the very first time with Jacques, Philippe, Didi, and their adventurous crew. After Jacques spent most of his life making movies about the sea, he saw something happening, something shocking. Plants that used to be alive and healthy were being poisoned. Fish were sick and dying. Doc saw that people, without realizing it, were slowly killing the sea and its creatures by dumping garbage and poisonous chemicals into the ocean he loved so much. Doc knew what he had to do. He had to make movies. Movies to warn people. Movies to save the sea. Jacques also spoke to presidents, to kings and queens, to people all over the earth, asking them to help save our oceans, our planet. And he spoke to children. Jacques dreamed that someday it would be you, exploring worlds never seen, never imagined. Whole new worlds, silent and shimmering. Worlds that are now yours, to discover, to care for, and to love. The end. That's such a fun story. I love hearing good biographies about people and how things were invented. 
So today we're going to make our own origami fish to go along with our book because Jacques Cousteau made that aqualung and became a man fish, right? So you might get intimidated. Oh, I can't fold origami. I don't have origami paper. That's okay. All you need is a regular piece of paper, even some scratch paper. Traditional origami paper, I have one here, is, here's my ruler, six inches by six inches. It's okay if you don't have that and you just have random paper because it's really easy to make origami paper. All you have to do with a regular standard size printer piece of paper is fold in and make a perfect, perfect triangle there. And now, where are my scissors? You cut around that triangle that you just made and you're gonna have a perfectly sized piece of origami paper. It's that simple. Unfold it and you have six inches about by about six inches. It's perfect. So I'm gonna do my folding with this piece of paper because I think it's easier for you to tell where the front and the back is with this one. But if you're using a scratch piece of paper, that's okay too. What you wanna do when you're done with your beautiful fish is maybe color it and give it some fun colors. Or instead of using plain printer paper, you could even use a picture you colored and cut it into origami paper. Keep reusing, right? All right, so first we're gonna make a lot of folds. First, we're gonna fold it in half. You might already have this nice fold if you made your own with me. Give it a nice crease. And now, unfold it. <laughs> then we're gonna fold it in half on the other edge. Nice crease. So we've essentially made an X. Now we're gonna make a T. We open it up and we give it a fold there. So you have half. And now we open it up again. <laughs> Down, give it a nice crease. So you have half again. Still some more creases to make. So open it back up and I want you to fold into that crease and then fold in again. So now you have two more creases and open it back out. Turn it and we're gonna do it again on this side. Fold in here, give it a nice crease. Fold in here, give it a nice crease. Open us out. And we're back where we started, but you might notice you have this great checkerboard with an X down it. And those folds are gonna be helpful because now is when we're gonna start making our fish. On a fold we already made, we're gonna fold in. And then on a fold we already made, we're gonna fold in again. Now this corner up here, we're gonna kind of pull that tab out. It's pretty easy. I call it squishing. We're gonna squishy that tab out. You want it to be a little more precise. And you have your corner. Now we're gonna do it again and turn it. Fold that one down right on your crease. It's the folds already there. And we're gonna squishy out another point. All right, it's not hard, is it? We're gonna turn it again and fold down. Now here's where it gets just a little tricky. And you can pull out this corner and squishy it out again, just like you did before so that you have those three triangles. And this one's a little more difficult because when you go to fold it out, you pull it and you fold it up like that. Kind of looks like a throwing star, doesn't it? But we're not gonna throw it. We definitely wouldn't wanna throw it and hurt someone with a paper cut. Now, what we do with this one we fold it out is we're gonna fold it in here and make sure it meets up. Those two are together. And then we're gonna fold this one that we have, use up that fold to fold it out. Is it starting to look like a fish? What do you think? <laughs> All right, so now we take this, we fold it in like that. And then we're gonna fold it up a little bit. Again. All right, but then we want it to come out some. So we fold it down and out. Is that a little confusing? You can always stop the video and rewind it, play it again. So for this one, we're gonna fold it in across. Give it a good fold all the way across. And then fold it out. And we have the tail of our fish. 
Now we need to make our fish's head. It's a little bit easier than that tape. You just take this and you fold all the way to that point that you have there. You should have a fold there. Give it a little space. And then you want to do the same on this side. Give it a little space. And you fold it in. Now's the fun part. We flip it over. And we have our very own fish, or maybe a man fish. You could call it Jacques if you wanted to. And it's a fun little origami fish. Now you could use this as a bookmark. Maybe put it on a present that you wrap, like as a bow. That'd be pretty. Oops. Or you could make a whole lot of them using different scratch paper. I had a lot of scratch paper. And I colored it. And I turned this one with some strings into a fishy mobile. That's not hard. You just get a grown-up self, you punch some holes in, add some strings, and I colored that little piece of box. Put it together at the top and you can hang it up if you want. If not, you can use your manfish origami however you want. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to check back with all of our social media feeds for more It's Elementary and other programs for the whole family.